the comfort, the lockdown, the way this shoe fits on top of your foot is, yeah, I'll put it out there, the best of any shoe that I have ever worn. So good morning, welcome back to the vlog. Hope your training's going well. Um, today I've got a first impressions review of the Hocker Mac 5. Um, this has been a highly anticipated um, daily running shoe for me. Uh, last year in 2021, my favorite shoe of the year was the Hocker Mac 4. So as soon as I saw the fifth iteration was coming out, I've been excited to get this shoe on my feet. I've now run 50 kilometers in this shoe um, in the last three days so that just goes to show you um, how well I've been getting on with it so far and uh, yeah big 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 spoiler is I'm absolutely loving the Mac 5 um, even better than the 4 which is going going some way um, yeah absolutely loving it I'm gonna give you my first impressions in today's video go over some likes and dislikes but first we'll start off with some specifications when I get back from this lovely 16 kilometers or 10 mile run this morning. Mac 5 just back from my run this morning 15.5 kilometers at uh, 5 10 per kilometer I put the runs on screen that I've done in this shoe so far the first run 24 kilometers straight out of the box on the treadmill at 409 per kilometer pace and then I've done two warm-ups before track workouts in this shoe both around six seven kilometers long um, so yeah totally around 50 kilometers in this shoe so far I've just dug out the Mac Four. This is the first shoe I've ever ran over a thousand kilometers in. Um, as you can see, it's now in retirement. I haven't run in this shoe for about uh, one or two months, probably, that since I put it sort of in the, in the cupboard, put it away for videos like this. Uh, but as you can see from the outsole coverage there, it did sort of wear down over time, but not too much, and I will talk about that a little bit more later in the later part of this video. But anyway, the Mac. Five. Let's talk some specifications. I'll go over a bit about um, what's changed between the Mac 4 and the Mac 5. So first of all, let's talk specifications. This shoe comes in at 130 pounds here in the UK or $140 in America. Great price point. I think that's exactly the same as the Mac 4. It definitely hasn't gone up uh, much. Maybe it's gone up by five pounds, I think. The drop in this shoe is a five millimeter drop. Again, the same as in the Mac 4. We've got 29 millimeters in the heel, dropping to 24 in the forefoot. In my UK size eight, it weighs 228 grams, which is absolutely nothing. It's definitely one of the lightest daily training shoes that I now have in my collection. So yeah, credit to Hocker there. I think it's about two or three grams um, lighter than the previous shoe, which is a great way to trend, a little bit lighter than the predecessor. One of the big improvements to the Mac 5 is the upper. So we've got a Jacquard um, engineered mesh, um, much, much more breathable than the Mac 4 here. Um, it was more of a fabric on the Mac 4, whereas this is more of a mesh. Um, the toe area here especially is very, very breathable. I wore this shoe in the car in the hot weather and I had the air conditioning on and my feet actually were getting cold because the aircon was coming straight through that um, upper. So yeah, very, very breathable, not only in that toe box, along the sides here as well. So if, you, if you're somebody who gets hot feet when you run, then this is a great shoe um, option. It's very, very breathable. And finally, onto the midsole, we've got a dual density midsole. So as you can see here, we've got this sort of orange and blue layer and then we've got this white layer underneath. So this um, sort of orange and blue layer is the Pro Fly Plus. 
in the Mac 4, we had ProFly. So this ProFly Plus is a slightly softer, supposedly more responsive um, foam. And then underneath that, this white layer here is uh, rubberized EVA. Interestingly, this shoe doesn't really have an outsole. As you can see, it's just this, um, this white EVA on the bottom. There's no sort of hard rubber bits on, on there. So yeah, durability was a bit of a concern for some people with the Mac 4, but again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. So let's go into some of my first impressions of the Mac 5. First run on the treadmill and the first thing I noticed was it feels exactly the same as the Mac 4 in terms of the ride, the fit, which to me is a great thing. Um, sometimes when shoe companies develop a range, they can change they can change too much about the shoe and it doesn't feel like the previous one at all. So for me, I really got on with the Mac 4. So when the Mac 5 came and it felt very similar, very familiar, that was a very pleasant um, feeling to me. When running in this shoe for the first time, I noticed that it feels a little bit softer than the predecessor. This ProFly uh, midsole has a softer sort of step in feel. And when you land in this shoe, you definitely sort of sink into that top layer of foam a little bit more than you did in the Mac 4. So I'd say it's slightly less firm. Um, and softer feel. I wouldn't say it feels more responsive, which is what Mac, which is what Hocker, sorry, are claiming. Um, I'd say it's as responsive as the Mac 4, but it just offers a little bit of a softer sort of step in feel. Now the real standout point about the Mac 5 is the comfort. Um, this upper and the way the sort of tongue sits on top of the foot is excellent. Um, I'd go as far as saying it's a 10 out of 10. I've not worn a shoe that fits better than the Mac 4, Mac 5, sorry. The Mac 4 and the 5 fit very similar, but I'd say this one's slightly better. Um, they've made improvements to the tongue. It's sort of slightly more minimal tongue this time round, but there's padding in the right areas, sort of on this top bit here where you tie up your laces, so there's no issues with sort of lockdown. And these eyelets here on this shoe are a real plus point. The way they sort of wrap around the top of my foot, um, it just feels yeah incredible and I think a lot of shoe companies can look to the Mac 5 um, when designing uppers as a sort of example model basically. Now I am clearly a huge huge fan of the Mac 5 and I would recommend it to a lot of people but one thing I will know is the responsiveness of this shoe doesn't necessarily blow you away. Um, I don't want to put the, the impression in that this is the best shoe that's ever been made. The responsiveness I would say is is good it's definitely adequate for those easy slash tempo runs, um, but it doesn't blow you away like, yeah, I don't know, the Zoom X foam would in the Nike range. So yeah, just wanted to put that in there. And my final first impressions was I was just really, really excited about this shoe. I feel like I've been missing sort of an easy day shoe like the Mac 5, a bit more minimal. Um, it doesn't protect my legs as much as say sort of the Nike Invincible would. There's a little bit less underfoot, which I think is quite important to add into your rotation. You don't want to be sort of babying the legs all the time. You need to build up that strength in the ankles. The Mac 4 was the first shoe I ever put um, a thousand kilometers into. Uh, a shoe, I never reached that sort of mileage in any other shoe and people said, oh this shoe hasn't got an outsole, it's not going to be durable, but yeah, I just wanted to share with you um, the bottom of this shoe. As you can see, it ha does wear down um, and the outsole, that shows signs of wear sort of after the first, even the first few runs if I'm totally honest, but that doesn't affect the performance of this shoe. Um, so yeah, something to note. Durability appears like it wouldn't be good, but I've actually found from the previous model, which has the same EVA um, rubberized outsole, that it was actually pretty good. If you've watched any of my other shoe reviews, you know I like to go over some likes and dislikes for each shoe I get into review. Now finding some dislikes for this shoe was quite difficult. Um, I sat sort of on the stairs after my run and was trying to, trying to cut up some um, negatives about this shoe which I'll go into in just a second but firstly my positives the comfort the lockdown the way this shoe fits on top of your foot is yeah I'll put it out there the best of any shoe that I have ever worn another thing I really like about this shoe is the weight 228 grams in my UK size 8 is yeah it's phenomenal um, as a result I feel like this shoe can you can do any sort of distance in this shoe I'd say up to around 20 miles or 32 kilometers would be the top point for me um, because it's so light it just keeps my legs feeling nice and fresh they don't feel like they're they're having to work too hard even towards the end of those runs 
Another big positive to this shoe is the landing and that step-in feel. The new Profly Plus midsole is a lot softer, which feels really nice when landing in this shoe. And it's also got this sort of grooved area here, which acts as a bit of like a trampoline. When you land on the midfoot, um, you just feel it give you a nice little transition onto the forefoot. Like all Hocker shoes, it has a real nice rocker geometry to it. So moving on to my dislikes. Um, one of those is actually the change to the midsole. Um, the Profile Plus is a great sort of a great improvement. It feels a lot softer. Um, but one thing Hocker have said on their website is it's meant to make this shoe feel a little bit more responsive and more sort of propulsive. And I wouldn't necessarily say I felt that on my first runs. Um, I would say it felt softer, but in terms of the sort of energy return, I would say it equals um, the predecessor, the Mac 4, despite feeling a little bit softer. And my only other dislike to this shoe was the lack of outsole, um, but as I said, as it wears down, it doesn't affect the performance of this shoe, and if I'm totally honest, I wouldn't change it. Um, if you add a bit of if rubber on here, some sort of thicker rubber, yes, it would make this shoe last a little bit longer, um, but it would also add weight, which I'm not really sure I would sort of have as a trade-off, but yeah. There are some of my likes and dislikes. Finally, on to my conclusion of where this shoe fits into my rotation. So I am gonna be using this shoe for my easy runs, um, primarily. I'm also gonna be using it for those runs where I wanna go out easy, but pick up the pace towards the end, so more of an up tempo. Um, and that is what Hocker have designed this shoe for. Um, I would even go as far to say as I would consider doing a 5K race in this shoe, or maybe a park run, um, because it is so lightweight and, and sort of poppy. Um, it's got that sort of option to be used as a, a racing shoe. I wouldn't say it's it would be my first choice, but I would consider it if I was just doing more of a sort of a tempo or threshold effort down at Parkrun. Absolutely loved the Hocker Mac 5. It's definitely up there with one of my favorite shoes of all time. Um, it gets my seal of approval. If you would like to purchase the Mac 5, then you can do so via an affiliate link. Um, just a bit of a disclaimer, with every purchase, I think I get around a 3% um, commission. But that being said, Hocker have not seen this review before it comes out. And as always, my views and opinions are very much my own. Um, but yeah, really excited to log more and more miles in this shoe. I'm sure it will reach at least 800 or 500 um, miles for me. But yeah, until next time, aspire to run, run to inspire. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite daily running shoe at the moment, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.